Hello everybody, we're back. So today we're going to learn about projectiles launched at an angle. Pew, like this. And um, let's start out with the simple one where we have a level ground and we have a projectile that is launched at an angle theta. And this launch velocity yeah, the launch velocity is VL, and so this projectile is going to travel like this and come back down to the same height. And this is really the most important part of this problem here, is that the it's a level ground, so the initial position, okay, which is here, we'll call that... Uh, di and this we'll call this uh, df now this is vertically that means that vertically if we write down our vertical analysis which by the way is under the influence of acceleration due to gravity we know that delta d equals zero why? Well, because as I said, final position is at the same height as the initial position. But what we want to figure out here is the delta dx. Okay? So delta dx is the distance. And we're going to actually use a different uh, variable for this. We'll call it r. And the reason we'll call it r is it stands for the word range. So this that's our purpose here is to figure out how far does this projectile travel. And by the way, you know, this has uh, this was way back in history uh, in warfare. This was actually used for military purposes trying to figure out where uh, launching missiles or I, I don't know if missiles well pr explosive projectiles where they would land to to, for um, artillery. Anyways, uh, for us, we're concerned about the math and the physics here. So the other aspects of this is that I'm going to change color. Well, actually, one more thing we, ha we have here. We'll say A equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's the, ex that's the acceleration of gravity that we're uh, constricted by. And we'll say up is positive. And now I'm going to change color and I'm going to show you the components of VL. So this horizontal side would be VL cosine theta and the vertical would be VL sine theta because sine is the opposite side to theta and cosine is the adjacent side to theta and VL is the hypotenuse. Now. Uh, let's switch back to black and so what we have here is that we have our initial launch velocity being vertical because that's the se that's the section we're in right now is VL sine theta okay well what we want to find in this situation is how many seconds or how much time is this object in the air for because once we find the time we'll be able to take that time and move it over into our horizontal analysis and figure out the range from there so if we if we figure if we look at the horizontal for a moment and let's do that now we know that this is going to be constant velocity and so we know that distance horizontally is equal to velocity multiplied by time. Now we know the horizontal velocity, which is constant, is it's here, right? It's VL cosine theta. And all we got to do now is multiply it by time and we have our answer. Um, but we don't know what the time is. So really, that's as far as we can go now. So we have to go back to the vertical and figure out what the time is. So in order to solve this problem, let's write down the equation that 
from kinematics, one half a t squared plus v i t. And what we're going to do now is notice that delta d is zero. So this becomes zero. And I can now solve for t simply by dividing every term in the equation by t. So if I divide this by t, divide this by t, and divide this by t, I get, let's move it up a little bit here, I get 0 equals 1 half a t plus v i. Now I'm simply going to move v i to the other side and get negative v i equals 1 half a t. And now I will uh, perhaps take it over here and go multiply by 2 and divide by a. So I'll get negative, or oh, actually, hold on a sec. I'll get negative 2 vi and divided by a, which is equal to t. And so, but now I'm going to substitute my values for a and I'm going to and by the way listen I'm actually not totally I actually would prefer to write this in a different way why don't I write that as equaling negative g because in this case g will equal 9.8 and so negative 9.8 is just negative g there so I can replace this. And also the other thing I'm going to replace is I'm going to substitute in VL sine theta for VI. So if I write it out, I'm going to get, now by the way, the negative G cancels the, if I write it out, negative 2 times VL sine theta divided by A, which is negative g my negatives cancel and so I end up where this is equal to time okay and so that's that's my uh, that's my time okay so 2 VL sine theta divided by g so now that I have this I can substitute this into over here And so I will get d here equaling vl cosine theta times 2 vl sine theta over g. Um, I can now simplify this. For one thing, uh, I can take the VL and the VL and have it equal to VL squared. Let's move it up a little bit here. And I can also have, uh, put the 2 here now, and then have sine theta cosine theta divided by G. Now, I don't know if you recognize this, but I do. This 2 times sine theta cosine theta is actually a trigonometric identity. So let's, let's write down that trig identity here. Trig identity. And you can look this up in a trig identity table. But essentially, sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. We're not going to bother proving this. It's not a math course. But like I said, if you look it up, this they are equal. So now what we can do is we can substitute in the simpler form of this. And finally, we'll replace the letter D, which by the way uh, is the delta DX here. We'll replace it with the preferred variable in this case, R, which represents range. So we'll say the range is equal to VL squared sine 2 theta divided by G.
And there we have our, that's a G. And there we have our range equation. So I must stress here that this equation that I've got will only work for, well, I've already drawn it up here. Let's go back to it. This equation will only work only working for projectiles finding the range where the initial position here is at the same height as the final position there. So basically it works for level ground. Where it does not work is for a question, so let's draw a line here. This equation will not work for this situation. You see, now, if an object is, is, is launched from here at some angle theta with VL, and now also let's say that there, it's at a height, let's say that you're shooting, some, let's say you're, you're launching something at an angle from the top of a cliff where the cliff has a height of, gosh, that's a really bad H there, there, where the height is H. Now, if we were to try and find the range, the, the horizontal distance, it's essentially the same problem, but what ends up being, the, the math ends up being more complicated because now we cannot divide through by t because delta d is no longer zero. So let's go ahead and try and solve this problem. It's essentially the same, uh, same thing, but oops. But this time, um, let's put in our horizontal and vertical again. So here's, here's these two guys. That's VL cosine theta. And that's VL sine theta. And well, what else do we know for the vertical situation? Again, the horizontal, by the way, oops, I want to change colors back. The horizontal situation is exactly the same. Okay? We've got constant velocity, and so therefore D equals VT, right? So we can say R equals. VL cosine theta times time. But obviously we have to figure out what the time is from vertical analysis. So if we go to our vertical analysis here, where we do have acceleration, now we'll take this equation, delta D equals 1 half AT squared plus VIT, but you see, now the problem is that uh, our delta D here is equal to negative H. Uh-oh, that's not zero anymore. Our VI is still equal to VL sine theta. And what else do we know here? Oh, yeah, right. We also know that our acceleration is equal to negative g, or negative 9.8. OK. Um, now, let's plug in our values. However, before we do this, well, actually, maybe we should do this first, and then I'll show you the quadratic. We, this is going to be a quadratic formula. Um, but let's plug in our values. So if we take this equation and write it e again, I'm going to get negative h, that's my delta d, equals 1 half. And my a is negative g. And then my I have t squared. 
and then I have uh, plus VI which is VL sine theta times T. Now I'm going to rearrange these equations or I, I'm going to just write it one more time the equation here. I'll write it I'll write this term first the the one half I'll, I'll write this term first okay so we'll go negative g by 2 which is essentially one half times negative g times t squared then we'll write this term second plus VL sine theta times t and now I'll take this term and take it to the other side now it becomes a plus h and now it's all equal to zero essentially all I did is I moved this guy to, to this side over here and therefore I have zero left on the other on the side of the equal sign and now the, the negative h becomes a plus h now what I'm going to show you here is the quadratic formula the quadratic formula form if you have learned this, we'll write this here. Quadratic formula is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And the solution to this problem is x equals uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac div all divided by 2a. So that's the solution to the quadratic. But what we have to realize here is that instead of solving for x, which is what they always use in mathematics, but this is physics, so we're solving for t. So essentially the t and the x are identical, so we're solving for t. Now if you'll notice that the square term comes first. Therefore, this, if I maybe change colors here, this is my A. This is my B. And this is my C. Notice it's AX squared, AT squared, plus BX, BT, plus C. In this case, it's, it's an H. So now we can go ahead and apply the equation to using our quadratic and say t equals negative b, so negative vl sine theta. That's negative b. So I'm just following this equation here. I'm just copying down the coefficients wherever I see it. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's vl squared sine squared theta minus 4 times a, which is negative g by 2, times c, which is h, all divided by 2 times a which is negative g by 2. Now I can simplify a few things here. I can't do a whole lot, but I can simplify it a little bit. I can say t equals negative vl sine theta plus or minus the square root of vl sine squared theta minus, now the 4 divided by 2 is 2 and the negative and the negative becomes a plus plus 2gh okay all divided by and the 2 and the 2 cancels and I'm dividing by negative g that's about as far as I can go now at this point if we solve for t we can now take that t maybe move it to about there I can take I can solve for the t here and once I get a value for it I can put it into here and and calculate my range. Now I'm not going to go ahead and do the math here. Instead, I'd rather stop at this point and say 
perhaps given some initial conditions, we can find the time in the air and then multiply it by VL cosine theta. So why don't we go ahead and do that? So the question that we I could pose to you at this point, maybe we could like, um, sure, why don't we move it up a little bit? And our question will be the same question, but now my launch velocity will be uh, 100 meters per second and my angle will be 37 degrees and my h or the height of the cliff will be 140 meters so essentially if I if I draw it out again um, I can draw it over here it looks like something like this And this is 140 meters. Okay, question How far does this thing travel away from the base of the hill or of the cliff? So we can now take these values and plug them in to our equation. So we would get negative. So I'm just going to copy this here. Okay, I'm going to get negative 100 squared times sine 37. Oh, no, 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 sorry, I messed up here. Let me fix that mistake. That's not squared. That's 100 sine 37. Now, here's the thing you got to be careful of here. Is it plus or is it minus? There's two roots to this equation. We can't have a negative time. That's not going to be the correct value. We have to have a positive time. Now, before I do any math, just take a look at all the positives and the negatives. This first term here is a negative. This is this also in the denominator is a negative. So I know the denominator is a negative. Now, if I subtract, and by the way, the square root of anything has got to be a positive number. So if I take a negative number and subtract a number, I'm definitely going to get a negative. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So therefore, I already know that I have to do the subtraction. Now, if you're not sure, that's OK. You can solve for both and just take your positive time. And that's the one that you would use. Um, but in this case, I, I figured out that it's negative. So I'll go negative the square root of 100 squared sine squared 37 plus 2 times 9.8 times 140 divided by negative 9.8. So why don't you go ahead and this is really, really good calculator practice. Pause the video here and see what you get for the time. OK, guys, so we're back. Uh, we, uh, lots of people had issues with this. I would say probably the most difficult part was uh, many students have difficulty with sine squared because sometimes, depending on the type of calculator you have, you have to use brackets for the sine squared part. Um, Personally, the calculator that I'm using, uh, I don't have issues with. I'll show you mine. Here's my calculator. It's the TI-30X, and it's a, it's a simple one. It's a very straightforward one, but the nice thing about it is that um, I don't have to worry about algebraic input. Anyways, so if you got the right answer, uh, you'd be getting 14.28 seconds and so that's the time in the air now we have to take this and we have to come back here and remember that we have to multiply this by VL cosine theta to get the range so to get the range now we would go times T and so now we're going to have 100 
cosine 37 times 14.28. And if you do that, you should get an answer of approximately 1140 meters. So that's correct. Um, and that's our, that's our range. So if we go back to our image, this ended up being 1140 meters and the height was 140 meters and the angle here was 37 degrees. Remember, it's a lot simpler with this equation to find the range, but that condition is only for a level surface. Okay? When you have a changing elevation, then the range becomes more complicated. All right. That's the end of this problem. See you next time.